All right, we're out here at Eddie Wong's. This is a uh, owner builder in Tempe, build a new uh, studio. We're squaring the building up right now. You wanna make sure it's pretty square or make sure it's real square actually. And we're popping lines all the way around. And once we get those lines popped, then we're gonna find the high point on the footing. Uh, you always wanna shim the block up. You never wanna have to cut it down. That's the homeowner Eddie there in the background with the shovel. And Alan's running around right now and I'm shooting it to find the, again, the high point because that's where we want to start setting the block. Once you find the high point, then you just start slipping the block over the rebar. You can see the wood shim there on the bottom. Uh, sometimes you need to shim it if the footing's not straight. Uh, this happened to be a high, higher spot in the footing. We had to shave a little bit off the block. Now we're checking it for uh, level and plumb. And he's going to take a look at it. Looks good. This is adjusting the flow on the gun. And then that first course you want to glue pretty good. Uh, you're going to be kicking dirt back on each side. It's, remember it's an ICF, an insulated concrete form. So uh, when you're throwing that dirt back on there, you want to make sure it doesn't, uh, doesn't move the block around. You'll see how we glue the regular block in a little bit. You notice the corners overlapping there. We got a, a corner piece you'll see that we put up soon. Each block weighs about 48 pounds. Uh, and again, we're slipping it over that rebar coming out of the footing. Now here we're cutting a block or ripping a block in half. We needed 18 inches to achieve finished floor height. After you cut it, then you take the raised expanded metal rasp and straighten, or straighten it out. This is gun maintenance here. When your can's empty, then you take the cleaner, you wash off the basket, well, the glue, so you don't uh, glue the new can to the basket. And you notice the tip of the gun's got a little residue built up on it. Every once in a while, take your keyhole saw and just knock that residue off. You can see the block being shimmed there. Now that's all up and ready to, uh, or, or level and straight. We just need to get it up to the finished floor of the 18 inches. You can see it's 18 inches on the top of the screen and uh, not quite on the bottom. This is how you do the corners. You either by the corner or the end element, cut the ear off, set it where you want it, take a six inch uh, galvanized or aluminum gutter spike and push it in or you take a hammer and drive it in then take your glue gun and glue it. Now that's all ready to pour right there. Got all the dirt back filled all the way around. Nothing's moving anywhere. Nice and square. And here we are grouting. We're going to grout this first uh, stem and then they'll come back and put their AB in like you see here. And then they'll come with the cement truck and start pouring it. I do a little bit of wheel bearing. The truck couldn't reach that back corner. And then they just uh, float it out, finish it, and then we're ready to start loading block on it. Now this job was pretty close to the office, so we just shoveled the block over as we need it. Typically it comes in a 53-foot box fan uh, on pallets, but like I said, we shuttled this. Now what they're doing here, they're going to pop another line just to assure that this first course is nice and straight. And then they're going to build a lead at either end. And then once they get that lead built, they can just follow the block. There's a the line pop. Now they're lifting the first block. Again, they only weigh about 48 pounds. They go up real easy. I always say when uh, Lindsay squats like that, if I squatted like that, I'd still be like that. But anyway, they're leveling it, making sure it's nice and plumb and straight. Looks pretty good. Now see this is all the gluing you do once you get up. You stab that gun about halfway into the skin and give it a shot about every 12 to 18 inches. Here's how you cut the block. You can't mark it with a pencil or a felt pen. So you mark it with a keel or a nail and then just take a handsaw, sawzall or even a chainsaw and cut the block to the desired length. Then you go through that same process and level it, make sure it's nice and plumb and straight. Once they got that down, then they stick a six inch gutter spike around the back side, 
run that string around. Now you're going to see him adjust that string down to the top of the first course. Get it right where they want it. And they do the same thing at the other end. Now all you got to do is come in and drop in your block. And because we had a four foot piece or five foot piece at each end, we ended up with a one foot filler here. You'll see Lindsay slide that in in a minute. Now that's one course right there. Now come back and glue it, like I said, about every 12 to 18 inches. Just a spot of glue. You get the mechanical bond from the foam expanding into the pores and the chemical bond from the adhesives. Now this is one day three people never touched a block before in their lives. They took it up five foot high all the way around. You can see the three block we got stacked there to kind of brace it, make sure the wind doesn't blow it over. Now we're up eight foot high. Alan's coming back and he's going to put the corner pieces on. These are some staples we, we provide or, or uh, rent uh, to uh, hold the corners in place. We use it for window and door bucking too. And uh, they come in five foot lengths. This building was 18 or 16 feet at one side and 22 at the other. That's why you see the rebar and the uh, corner sticking up higher than the wall. Now Alan's going to glue the corner piece in. We want to put a little more glue there. Now this is uh, where the ledger board is going to go for the mezzanine. This is kind of the conventional way of doing it here. Those other holes you see in the wall, those are access holes because we're going to grout this in two four foot lifts but in the same day. If this had any windows, you'd want to grout the window first and then do the access holes. There's no windows in this job so we just started with the access holes. As soon as that access hole gets full, you tell them to shut off the pump. You go to the next hole and somebody comes back and puts the plug in. Once that plug's in there, you can glue around it. You see some plugs down there in the bottom that were already done. Once you get all the way around, then you go back to the beginning and start grouting the top. Typically, the rebar goes four foot on centers, except the engineer called for some extra rebar over those doorways. That's why that was there. Again, this is the conventional way where you transfer the measurements down to the ledger board and drill the holes and then put the ledger up on the wall. Then you come back and put wash washers on, nuts, and then your joist hangers, and then run your joist and you're good to go. You can see the access holes there below where those plugs are where we grouted that. Now we're taking the building up full height. You can see that string up there on the top. And then uh, here's one end here where you can see that we've only grouted this eight foot high. You see the string there. We pre-cut all those pieces on the ground instead of doing it on the ledger. And there's some plywood forming we put on there to, uh, that's two inches higher than the block so we got a concrete cap. Here's where the real trick comes in. We did all the layout, we did uh, all the bolts, all the hardware, everything there on the ground, and then we threw it up on the wall. You may have noticed those all threads, they go all the way through the wall, and that kind of sandwiches that ledger board on there. Now these are kickers we put in place to hold that ledger exactly where we wanted it. Then we came back and ran our joists and decked it. You can see the access holes aren't grouted yet, so none of that second uh, lift has been grouted. You can see the uh, kickers we got there holding that ledger where we want it. This is the engineer here watching us do the second pour. They've already done the access holes, now they're up top topping it off. There's the pump pumping the mud up on the roof. This is a mechanical. It's all suspended from the ceiling. This is electrical. After it's grouted, then take a chainsaw and just hog out where your wires go. The skin's two and a quarter inches thick. And by going all the way to the back, you're more than the inch and a quarter that's required by the building department. This is a demonstration of how easy it is to route out for the electrical. Then just take your conduit again. Push it to the back of the cell. That's a homeowner eddy there demonstrating. Once you get it back in the back of the cavity, then you just put a little spot glue on it to hold it where you want it.
Now Eddie's demonstrating how you cut off the excess glue. And that's just about it. Really a nice job on the electrical. We're going to show more on the stucco in another video. Thank you.